Okay, I'm gonna start a drawing for you guys right now and go for a little bit. Uh, I just wanna show you the way that I would approach a uh, simple still life. I have a onion, potato, tomato in a circular bowl. And I also took a, in a little bit of the skin off the onion too and, and left it exposed. I put it on a black ground, which will make it a little easier for, for, uh, for you to see. I'll photograph that at the end of the the demonstration, but I want to show you how I'd start with circular forms and how to render them. All right, I have an array of pencils um, over here. You know, I have everything from a 2H to a 6B. I have my kneaded eraser, which is pliable, doesn't make any grit. Um, I have my white eraser, okay, which is a hard plastic eraser. I have a couple different versions of them. I even put a single edge razor blade in the one white eraser to show you how I would actually trim it. Um, kept the pencil sharpener handy should I need it. So let me just start for a little while. Um, and I generally start uh, light and work to dark. And I'm working with a 3B pencil and I've, I've sharpened my point out. I don't have to use this one necessarily, um, but I'm working with a 3B and by working with a 3B, what I'm doing is I can get that dark if I want, but right now I just want to make marks soft and delicate. I want to look for things like, like the axis. And an axis is like the center point that travels down in the, on the onion. Okay, the onion is a, is, is a circular shape. It runs like that. But you'll notice that I put like points where it kind of stops. You know, let's just call those borders. finding heights, thinking all the time about the fact that it's curved. And it's gotta be curved two ways. That way coming around and then that way. So it's actually got two axes that I have to think about. It's got the center, actually three if you think about it. One, if you cut it in half, it would have this going that way too. Now, How do I measure where things are? I use straight lines. And then I might measure, I might sight it. This is called sighting where I take my tool and I put it at the angle. Where does it end? Where does it start? About here in the onion. That's where the skin starts. Where does it end? I put my pencil on it, sight it about here. What angle is that? I turn it sideways, now I have the angle of the skin. And it doesn't take much, and then I want the angle of where there is no skin, which turns out to be there. So this is all black behind it, from the cloth. I might take that same idea and move it this way. I'm trying to find the ellipse of the bowl. You know, I know the bowl has a top, it has a lip, it also has a bottom. And you know, if you've held the bowl, you'll know the shape, it's a double circle. Tomato. Potato, where does it end? How far outside the bowl does it sit? Where does it sit in the middle of the bowl? How high up does the tomato come? How much of the lip do you actually see? Like I said, I'm doing this with a, I'm doing this with a 3B, but with a long point. By doing it with a long point, that doesn't allow me to put a whole lot of pressure on the, on the pencil. Look at how light those lines are. And you know, I'm not afraid of just going in and cleaning it up. Now, when you use a white eraser, it leaves that, it leaves grit. You use the kneaded eraser, if you, if you want, no grit. Now, it's not as good an eraser, at least not to me. I mean, but it does serve a purpose. I mean, it's more for charcoal than it is for pencil, but I use them both. Um, you know, if there's a very specific place where I want to get a line, you know, maybe I want to be very specific in the way that I go about it, I cut a piece off. I shave it, and then I travel it over there. 
So that's what that's about. All right, I'm gonna draw for a little bit. And I'm gonna do a lot of hatching. And the hatching I'm gonna start doing is actually gonna follow what we call follow the form. And if you look at it, I don't wanna do hatching like this to make shading, because that has no relationship with that. Okay, there's none there. This, on the other hand, the kind of curved hatching follows the edge of the onion. It obeys the onion's rules. I might look for, you know, where a shadow starts, put it in as a general shape. I might look for a highlight or another highlight. Um, if you see something like a little bit of the skin extending, which I do right there, I might put where it attaches to the onion, where it's free of the onion, and then find the angle, once again using siding, that it bends back. And that might tell you where it might travel if it was curved. Erase that out, soften that line because it's not that dark, and voila. I've got a piece of the onion skin actually traveling off it. The potato's a little more lumpy. You know, not a perfect oval. So I look at it and I say it's wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And it's gonna travel, once again I sight it, you know, putting this on the edge of it just to tell me what the angle is and then move it forward. Um, it's got some indentations. I may want to put the indentations down. I'm going to put them down as uh, thoughts more than anything else. I just want to know where they're located. Now, this is a darker object than the white onion. I might switch my pencil out. Let's try something else. I'm going to try a 6B closer. Same rules, though. And by that, I mean it's a curved form. So I like to curve my, my lines as I lay them in. And I might go in more than one direction. But never going. No. No. Evil. That looks like I put a patch on it or something. Depending on how exact you want to get with a pencil, and that's one of my seals, is that I can really move graphite. And look, I see a dark shadow right here. And I'll photograph this as best I can when I stop taking the video so you can at least compare and contrast. Spacing is important. Where's the bowl in relation to the onion? Um, the onion tends to taper up a little bit. I like that. The good thing about having a black cloth behind it, I can easily take some of it out if I make a mistake. Think across the center. Think, think as if you would almost put a string right across the center of the bowl. And I'm using darker pencils than I normally would because I want you to see my lines a little bit. Usually when I started drawing, when I was, you know, working on a drawing like this, I'd work lighter to darker. I'd use maybe an HB. If I wanted to go really light, I'd use like a two or three or four H. Don't press too hard. And the graphite doesn't move very much. With this, you see the graphite will move. Six Bs really move a lot. That can come in handy later. You know, if I want to gather the texture, I 
I mean, I like to draw with my eraser. It's something I've done for quite a bit of my life. It, you know, I pick up a little bit of the graphite and I just move it. But just because I did that doesn't mean I would be afraid of doing this. If I want to give the, the idea of cross hatching, I might hatch right over the top of it. Here we have the tomato. Once again, I look for highlights. Circle them, always make them a little bit bigger. Shadow lines are important. Maybe look for shadows being cast inside the bowl. You know, where does it start? Where does it finish? Is there a, an area that's lighter in the center of it? Yes. There's a, sh there's a shadow cast in the bowl, and there's also a little lip to the bowl. So that's where the shadow is going to go away. Find me the highlights. There's a couple right here. You know, make the highlights that shape. The highlight might travel on a piece of glass. It's longer. It might travel like that. There might be a couple more highlights right about here. I might have to pull those out. Might need to do it with that. There's even a shadow on the black cloth that I begin to see. You know, and shadows start darkest close to the object that casts it and they become more diffuse as they go away if you get overlap overlap will lead to really dark shadows in, in the overlap sections Once again, the tomato's rounded, so I'm gonna round the forms a little bit. I'm just gonna follow its edge and make them as close together as I can. I'm gonna to try to put as much pressure as I need on it without overdoing it. I'm not putting that much pressure on it, I don't want to. You know, it's I'm looking at these things and I'm grading them out. The darkest thing in my drawing is, is the cloth. The next darkest thing would probably be the purple um, potato especially in its shadow. The next dark, next darkest thing would be parts of the tomato and parts of the bowl. So if I, had to rate, if I had to rate them, that's the way I'd go. The lightest parts would be the highlights on the glass or on the uh, ceramic, and then the highlights on the onion and highlights on the tomato. So that's the way I'm thinking about it. You're probably saying, what do I do with that? That little indentation. Well, find out where it's happening there. And then think about the fact that that it's a dip. I'll draw it sideways here real quick so you can see it. It's, it's a dimple, it's doing that. So if you have a dimple, it's doing that, and the part that I just drew is that dark spot right there, what we need to think about is where the light source is. Highlight, highlight, where it's darkest. There might be a little dark back there, and there might be a little bit of dark coming around that way. And then up here, it's gonna be it's gonna appear a little lighter. And if it appears a little lighter, it might actually pucker. Maybe it goes in a little bit. Second highlight would be there, it'd be a little bit lighter. Dark spot down here. I'd like to get that one too. 
where there's another indentation and another indentation. Um, I'm not opposed to using an eraser to pick or stipple. This is called stippling when you just stab it. In other words, you don't rub it, you just, just dab at it and it'll remove, as you can see, it removed a lot of it. Um, let's see, on the onion, let's just pick a spot right here. Okay. So that's the skin. There's a little bit of a rib in the skin. It's gonna be light on this side, dark on this side. And I'm gonna show you how to do that just in one spot. First, I'll make the hole of the bottom. And once again, check out how I'm making my shading. Follow the form. No. If you wanna play tic-tac-toe, don't come to my drawing class, just play tic-tac-toe. Now, if we were doing square objects or something like that with flat, flat planes, you could use those. But on rounded objects, no way. It is very little help. And think about going in more than one direction. Think of, you know, try to keep your hand off the drawing when you can. If you want, you can use like a, you know, I only have this piece of chamois. I'm just gonna show you what I would do. I might put something under my hand as I draw, just to keep from spreading around the graphite. That's starting to look pretty good. So let's go back to this little rib thing here. Get real close, real close. We even go through it. What I'm doing right now is I'm making my mark this way, going through it a little bit. In other words, I'm making it where it touches down over here a little bit. I'm not afraid of that at this point. Once again, I'm wrapping my lines around the shape. Try this one. And then I might do this. And then I'm gonna go for a slightly lighter pencil. It's a 2H because I can get really a tight, hard, sharp point, and then maybe I go back in. And you'll notice with the 2H, I can be more precise. The H pencils are more about line. The B pencils are more about value. Now, if I have to sell that to you as a, as a form, I don't want to leave it like that. I'm going to go back in, I'm going to sell it this way. And that's how I'd go about starting a still life drawing. You know, general to specific, no textures, just highlights and shadow, placement, Use sighting, you know, use your tool as a way to kind of like move yourself around, you know, intersect things. Just, it's almost like a plumb line. You know, where's the center at? How is the object presenting itself? Is it tipped? Is it straight upright? You know, um, so there you go.